Humpty sat on a wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Let's give it a shot, everybody. Ready? And you can clap. You remember, I'm a primary teacher. So let's keep the rhythm in. One, two, three. Humpty Dumpty had a wall. Because they say Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All of these horses and honor of them, but Virgo didn't move them to the third I love it because it's the inflection, the big inflection. Okay, we all do this, and you know what? Uh, people say, oh, that's a nice kindergarten lesson. Actually, this is a very good high school lesson because it's a social studies discussion, by the way. This has to do a lot with politics. Corruption, <laughs> okay, but we'll leave that for another workshop. But that's wonderful, I can read it, we can talk about phonemic awareness, the rhythm, the rhyming inflection. I'm not doing my job until I go to my students and go, Humpty Dumpty, can you point to Humpty Dumpty? Where is he? Point to it. This is your finger, yeah, just point to it. Point to it, where is he? Humpty Dumpty is right there on the floor, he's cracked. Yes, there he is, applause. Where was Humpty Dumpty before his fall? Where was he? On the wall. On the wall? She says on the wall. So now she pointed to it. I'm talking to her at her level. I'm asking her to do something she can actually do successfully. But where was he before his fall? On the wall. She understood the question. It's a close question. Answer, wall. How do you know this was written a long time ago? Because of the language they're using. What about the pictures? Medieval clothing? What are you doing in my classroom with the word medieval? <laughs> what am I doing here? I'm, I'm, I'm expecting physical response. I'm expecting a one word answer. I'm expecting him to elaborate. But my question was open ended. My question was at her level, at her level, at his level, at her level. So what am I doing here? Creating the safety net. If I want a child to jump, they need to see a pile of leaves. Not only that, mistakes were welcome. And I allow them to do what? Connecting, talk, read, and write about you. Not only that, we, I we you the poem. How many of you have heard about we you? I we you. I we you. I'm going to do it. We're going to do it. Ultimately, you're going to do it. You're going to have to be accountable. But own it in a safe environment. That is the difference. Every single lesson has to be done that way. Now, there are beautiful creatures in this world. That's not us. We don't have the luxury to evolve this slowly. We need to evolve much faster. Technology is at our fingertips. Technology is right there in front of us. So we need to provide students with the ability to multitask, to think, to be inquiry-based, and to use everything available to you. Everything available to you. Blended instruction. Still, even though we have computers and laptops and Wii's and iPads and iPods and we're e-books and all of this stuff, we still need to have children be creative, be inspired, infer, cause and effect. What is this story about? What's gonna happen next? Look at his face. He feels, finish the sentence. He feels. Reflect. Confused. There we go, there we go. Okay, I'm here, Ma. So what are, we, what are we doing here? If you want to accelerate instruction, Transition children faster and at grade level. If children are to own the language in a safe environment, provide comprehensible input. Comprehensible. You've got to get up and act it out. You've got to have the posters, the picture cards, the computer software. You need to have the book, the e-book, the manipulatives. You've got to have all this stuff. All of this stuff is part of the ELD culture. You need to have the right question at the right time for the right child. What was the message to these kids? I will not humiliate you. I know your level, I have a question. At your level, for this topic, at this moment. Self-respect, respect among the team, respect to the teacher and vice versa. When I do all of this, guess what? I'm choosing not to reteach it. At my disposal, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the intervention. <laughs> When I choose to use all the tools, what do I do? I choose not to reteach it. I'm choosing to do it once for the long term. I'm buying time. I'm buying time. It's engaging. It's productive. It's engaging. It's productive. What am I doing here? No, this is going backwards. This was my fear earlier. My slides doubled. 
Okay, so it's productive. Now I want you to focus on that picture. I want you to picture walk it. Whether you're in elementary school, middle school, high school, college, there's no better way to accelerate instruction than by developing vocabulary. I actually believe vocabulary development is one of the most important keys to language acquisition. Because we talk about listening, speaking, reading, and writing. But do they have enough words to speak, read, or write with? So look at this. How many words can you actually place on this picture? Think. Think like a mathematician. Think like a scientist. Think like a poet. Think like a writer. Always bring, think cross-curricular. That's part of the ELT culture. All of this has to be happening. Why am I saying all this? Because if I want to transition faster, I need to transfer my native language into English. I already own a language. I already own vocabulary. I already own language structures. I just need to transfer them. Cause and effect will transition from Korean to English. Predictions, transition. Sequencing, transitions. All of that, they don't have to learn it again. They know it, they can transition it. Yet the key here is how to say it in English. So, where's the vocabulary? So, hey, picture walks. Lots and lots of picture walks. Once upon a time, there were two little boys and a girl, and the wind blew really hard. So, the hat was blown up her head, and it's flying far, far away. The wind took it all the way up to the clouds and up the hill. So, he said, I'm going to help you. No, 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 I can go get the hat. So, she ran up after the red hat. And the puppy was running behind her. They were so excited, going through the blooms and the flowers. And it probably was a spring day. Maybe it was about to rain. I don't know. She couldn't get it, but she went uphill and she went downhill pursuing this cat. Soon enough, he said, well, let me help you. The squirrel thought, well, if she couldn't, he can't. <laughs> now, why did I see the squirrel? Because I'm a good picture walker. If I don't see the squirrel, I'm not going to talk about the squirrel. And guess what? If I don't talk about the squirrel, it's not going to show up in my writing. You see here? Yet we want everybody to have voice. Well, pictures, pictures, pictures. So he ran up the hill, and he ran down the hill, and the puppy was saying, here we go, we're going to catch the hat. You're going to be so happy to catch the hat, because she's going to be so happy to catch the hat. So he caught the hat, and they walked away, and she was happy forever and ever. <laughs> okay, so there's my picture walk. Now, I'm a little rough with a picture walk because I'm still a little jet lagged, but I think you can do a better job. So, we can do an activity. An activity. I want you to look at the pictures and start thinking of every single word you could actually use to tell the story. Okay, so I'm going to backtrack, and I want you to start thinking about what words will you use to describe this story. I want you to be as descriptive as possible. So, the hat. In your head, I want you to tell yourself the story. And I want you to picture walk it. Look all over that picture, looking for all the details that you can find in order for you to think about it. Obviously, if you're thinking in Korean, if you're thinking in Arabic, in Spanish, if you're thinking in French, you've got to transition that as much as you can. Transition it into English. Are you going to make some errors? Yes, but mistakes are welcome. Are you going to make some errors in your language structures? Yes, your oral grammar is probably not going to be perfect. But I don't care. I want you to tell the story. I want you to take a risk. Use the language. And be excited about learning English. The more excited you are, the easier job I'm going to have. Teaching you everything you need to learn. <coughs> every single it. Every single it. Objective. So, once upon a time, tell the story to yourself. Be as descriptive as possible. <coughs> see, this is good noise. You see? Good noise. <laughs> You know, control might lead to compliance, but it doesn't inspire you to do your best. Am I controlling you? No, I'm just saying, I want you to just tell a story. I want you to look at, at the pictures, come up with as many words as you can, because you're going to put together a sequence here. You're going to put together a plot. 
You look at the characters. You look at the environment. What's going on? I'm not controlling you. I'm inspiring you. And that's very important to know. A quiet classroom is not necessarily a good classroom. Often, I go to schools and principals walk me through the school. And they say, this is my best teacher. We get there, the, the walls are white, the kids are quiet, and the teacher is talking. And I'm standing there, and five minutes later, the teacher is still talking. <laughs> and I'm scared to death. The walls are white. The walls are one of the best places for you to get a teacher aid. Free. Your teacher, your walls can teach. Your walls teach. The students are quiet. Control might lead to compliance. It doesn't inspire you to do your best. So what do we need? Give them the opportunity to connect and talk. And the teacher needs to stop talking and allowing the children to do what? Use the language if they're going to own the language. So he was chasing the hat. He caught the hat. And they went home. And they were happy forever and ever. The end. OK, now A, B, A, B. Shake your hands. I want to make sure you remember who's your B. A, shake your hands with B. A, B, A, B, A, B. <laughs> Got it? Excellent. Now this is what we're going to do. I'm going to say once upon a time, once upon a time, and A is going to start telling the story to B. Then I'm going to say B. That means B is going to take over the story. It's going to follow the sequence to A. A. A, they take it over, B takes it over, A takes it over. So you're going to tell the story to each other. You're going to work in pairs. You're going to be excited about it. Listen, and I want you to assess how descriptive the person is. I don't just want you to say the girl was chasing the hat. No, the girl was wearing something. Was she running up or down? Was it windy? Was it spring, winter, fall, or summer? What was it? OK? Once upon a time, A, start. Position. Maybe you're intermediate. Maybe you're advanced. Maybe you're advanced high. But they're laughing at each other. No, they're laughing with each other. Are they self-correcting? Probably. Are they helping each other with the words? Yes. Is somebody maybe saying, oh, I know it in Korean, but I don't know it in English. Well, tell me the word in Korean. You know, often when I was in my classroom, obviously we had all Spanish speakers. I had 35 Spanish speakers in my classroom. The instruction was in English. Did, that, did I let him speak Spanish? Yes, I did. But after sharing in Spanish, I would say, then transition it into English now. Transition it. Oh, but I don't know. Well, guess. Make it up. Just a cognate. Think of a prefix, a suffix. Just give it the inflection. Maybe, maybe it's going to be correct. I don't know. Give it a shot. 
But you know for sure that if you're going to use the native language to express yourself, because at this moment you don't know the word in English, you're going to have to give it a shot in English. You're going to give it a shot and try to transition that into English. They knew that for sure. So they were confident. They knew they could actually speak Korean, but they needed to transition that into English. If it wasn't transitioned by the pair, it was transitioned by the group. If it wasn't transitioned by the group, then we took it as a class. If not, we send it home for homework. But you need to be responsible for that transition because remember, I, we, you. It's so simple, huh? But I, we, you has an amazing message. The teacher will be there for me, the class will be there for me, but ultimately, I need to be there for me. An important message to know when I'm going to learn a new language because guess what? I'm in language shock, I'm in culture shock. And I'm expected to learn a new language. But if I choose to learn it in a safe environment where I can actually take a jump and not get hurt because mistakes are welcome, I'm gonna take a lot more chances. And this is not just elementary. This is elementary, middle school, high school, college, it doesn't matter. If you're learning a new language, you're learning a new language, it's difficult. But you've got to be given permission to use your language schema, a schema that you already own. All languages have vocabulary, all languages have language structures, all languages have skills and strategies which can be transitioned. All I need to do is learn the language to transition them with, and I'm allowing you to do it. If I don't allow you to do this, I could have gone directly to the lesson. Pam had a hat. No text, no language. Pam ran up. Pam ran down. Pam Dan ran up. Dan ran down. Guess what? Dan got the hat. Go Dan, go Pam. What a fantastic story. It's a wonderful story. It's controlled. It has a purpose. But if I had to allow you to create your own story through a picture walk, where was there the language? It wasn't there. Who had more language? You did. Who had more vocabulary? Who took more risks? Who worked as a team? You did, you did, you did, you did. I bought time. After that experience, and maybe we even write it. Maybe we share write it. Maybe you write it in pairs. Maybe you come up together and compromise on the story as a group. Maybe we rewrite the end and rewrite the, the beginning or rewrite the ending. All this is happening while, of course, I'm going to bring my groups and teach them. Ah, 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 ah. But not at the expense of language. Not at the expense of language. This is very important. Everything now is available on the computer. It's at our fingertips. So not to have a blended classroom, is really a detriment to your instruction. You've got to use computers. You've got to have the ebook on page 25 and the print book on page 25. And you need to hyperlink to that related topic. And you need to go to Google. You need to come back. And you need to ask children to find meaning in what they're learning because they're screen agers. <laughs> <laughs> they're screen agers. Yes. I see parents all the time at the airport. Guess what they do when the child cries? six months old. They hand them out the phone. They give them the iPad to a six month old. And guess what? The child stops crying. Why? It's engaging. Action, reaction. Action, reaction. These are the classrooms of the future. So we've got to prepare our children for it. They are ready for it. They're native, digital natives. They want to do it and we should do it. We should do it. Education is the next step is the next step in the evolution of technology. Technology is driving transformation. We've got to embrace it, especially for our ELT students, because they need a lot of visuals, and they need gamification. <laughs> Turning spinach into ice cream. <laughs> Raise your hand if you love grammar in first grade. OK? You've got to do it. This kid has to be turning to this kid from passive to active. You can only do it if you provide the environment. And what is our number one goal? To transfer primary language and enjoy bilingual listen through daily code switching, which means I'm allowed to go back and forth, use the schema that I own, transition as much as I can, but use it in a safe environment. Really key. So learn and lead, learn and lead, learn and lead. <laughs> 
and, and of course, we need to have a lot of professional development because as Professor Richard said, and I say too, you only, it only becomes part of the ELD culture. It only becomes part of your culture. ELD will become part of you if you practice, practice, practice. Practice, practice, practice. To the point where you don't have to think about it, you just do it. You don't think about it, you just do it. You own the strategies. Now I can focus on your needs. Point to Humpty Dumpty. Where was Humpty Dumpty before the fall? How do you know Humpty Dumpty lived a long time ago? I need to have it at my fingertips. Yet, you're still gonna use paint to get dirty, you're still gonna use computers, and you're gonna blend the two. Blend the instruction. And have lots and lots of fun through innovation, and at the end, what do we have? What, what is that? <laughs> I'm sorry, that's my last workshop. <laughs> Don't go to Hall 8 M903. My next workshop is gonna be in about 10, 15 minutes, so I hope that you join me there for more hands-on uh, and practical uh, strategies. Till then, thank you very much. <laughs>